get a little more this way. We're not going to have us. Oh, wow. You look at that. It's just pulling me all the way down the bank. All right, guys, uh, I took took a moment and looked a couple things up. And uh, so, yeah, I, I looked up uh, auto selling and I also looked up how much it's going to cost us to store our oats at the uh, train station silo. Uh, so as far as the auto sell goes, apparently what happens is when you auto sell your product, you take about a 35 percent hit. Um, and I found that out from a YouTuber named Farmer Klein, who does a lot of uh, farming simulator videos. Um, seriously doubt he's watching my videos, but if he is, thank you very much for the information. Really appreciate that. Farmer Klein, uh, shout out to you, buddy. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, so I guess the idea is that if this is auto selling, it either means that customers are coming to me to get the product. Uh, which means, you know, the sale price should be cheaper because they're coming to get it instead of me delivering it to them. And, uh, or we are paying someone else to, to distribute the product, uh, for us. Uh, you know, so we have like a, a hired worker who comes and loads them up and then goes and sells them for us. So 35% is, it, it's kind of a big chunk, but I think over the long term, you know, it, it's, it's maybe not that bad because, Again, we're just we just have money trickling in. We're not. It's not. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's not costing us anything because it is uh, for the fertilizer and the time you know to load it. But um, you know, we we have that steady source of income without us having to to do all of that manual labor. So it does kind of make sense. Uh, it's a bit of a steep hit, but because we're also using modded greenhouses that double the production. Um, I think what we're going to do is, uh, over the normal course of action anyways, uh, go ahead and, and use auto sell. And they do, uh, they do, they will sell to the highest price too. So, so I was able to also determine that. Um, so let's do that for now. And um, so, yeah, we want to go here and we want to set the outgoing product. So change output mode to selling on all of these. And here again, uh, we're just going to assume that, you know, we, we've hired a, you know, a, a, a transportation company to come and get our produce, you know, every day or every other day or whatever. Because we're not going to see the pallets now, you know, that I've got that set up. At least I don't think we will. To sell that for us. And then we should expect a nice little tidy sum coming in uh, every day with very minimal effort. Okay. So we will keep an eye on, you know, the fertilizer level and the water level for that matter. And based upon what I'm seeing so far, my guess is we're probably going to have to replenish these maybe on a, a weekly basis, perhaps. Or maybe the, uh, when I say weekly, I guess I should say, uh, you know, when when somewhere like six or seven in-game days goes by, not every week because of, you know, the way that the time works in the game. Okay, so cool. So we'll keep an eye on that and um, go from there. Very good. Let's uh, head on over to our field. Uh, there is one other. Th well, here, yeah. Let's get over to the combine. Um, now we have a couple of options. If if uh, what I read is correct, if we store our oats at the train station, so there's a silo at the train station that you load your oats into, and then, um, uh, and then it you know gets loaded on the train. It costs $50 per 10,000 liters per day. Okay. So if we were to instead lease a trailer, because we can't really afford to buy one right now. I mean, we only have $23,000, which is not a lot of money. Um, so let's look at trailers. So if we were to say lease the same trailer that we currently have, which is this one. Okay. So this is, I don't, I don't know why they don't show us this in liters. I know I could do the conversion, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I'm not sure how many liters is in 18.5 uh, square meters. Um, trying to remember, you know, how much wheat we had put into our trailer before. But anyway, nevertheless, if we leased this thing, um, it's going to cost us, 
it's going to cost us $320 per day. And in addition to, you know, the upfront cost and when we actually use it for work hour, I don't know if work hour counts when the trailer's just sitting there with grain in it or not. But, you know, we're looking at $320 a day just for this one single trailer. And again, I'm not sure how many liters goes in there, but if it's say, you know, 20, uh, 10,000, oh, what was that calculation again? It was 50 bucks for 10,000 liters, right? So it seems to me, uh, you know, but the long and short of it, it seems to be without, you know, doing the math very seriously is that Storing at the train station silo is definitely going to be the cheaper way to go. And we have to store it until January before we sell it. So I think that's what we're going to do. All right. So that's been decided. Um, What I want to do... Well, let's go ahead and fill up the combine first. And we'll, you know, we'll even see how much that gets. I mean, it, it we might be able to fit all of it in our own trailer. I don't think we will. But we might. We'll see. And then we'll uh, head down to the train station with our load once uh, we have a full trailer load and a full combine load, if that's what it will take. So it probably will, but let's just see what happens here. Is that car going to... Well, the red car is not going to be able to get by unless we... We can't, we can't drive over the crop with... Oh! I just said we can't drive over the crop of the combine. Oh. Maybe we can. <laughs> we have crop destruction on, so I don't know why that didn't just destroy those, but whatever. Okay. Um, Lucked out there, eh? All right. So let's go ahead and harvest our oats. Man, I've been waiting a long time for this, and I'm so thrilled that we got that header, too. It's just such a cool thing, man. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. This is awesome. And yeah, the combine is set to swath, so that way we can uh, bale some straw. As a little added bonus at the end there. For now, we'll just sell it. Later on, though, when we when we have cattle in particular, uh, we will definitely need to use that straw. Uh, the way this game works is you need straw in order for the cattle to produce manure. And you also need straw to make what's called a uh, total mix ration, which is the best food that you can feed cattle in the game. Okay, so let's just turn and head this direction. It's so neat that we got this this uh, header. I know I keep going on about it, but it really, oh, it really is. Okay, hold on going on about it and screwing up my line here. Okay. Need to make I need to make smaller corrections and turning turning too much. Well, uh, part of the problem though too is I'm on a hill, so that's that's throwing me off a little bit. Yeah, I see it's it's actually pulling me to the left. Because we're right on the kind of a crest of a hill. That kind of sucks. That's alright. We'll make the best of it. It'll only be a problem on this, just on the in edge of the field here. In fact, you know, it might be better for us to just get a little more this way. We're not going to have as... Oh, wow, you look at that. It's just pulling me all the way down the bank. It's crazy. Uh, but like I said, it should only be a problem here because we're kind of on this slant and the rest of it should be nice and level. Yeah, I'm not doing that. It's it's pulling me that way. How interesting. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is... Um, back up into the ditch because I hit the wrong pedal here. We're going to make a little bit of a headland on this. Look at that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible the way that that, uh, that swath went, but 
Whatever. Okay. We should be... I think we'll be okay here because we should be more on level ground. Anyway, yeah, what I was saying is we'll, we'll make a little bit of a headland on this side of the field and then we'll, you know, go up and down that direction. We are 25% full at the moment. I wonder, though, too, if because we're using a larger header than what this combine is supposed to really be using, that's probably part of why we were having some problems. But, I mean, it's much better now than it was before, so it's just going to be a little tricky, I guess, when we're on the slant there. So I'm just going to keep cutting right on through all the way to the end of the field up this way. Got to keep an eye on our our capacity too. Yeah, it's still a little squirrely. It's kind of... I think it's going to be okay through here, but when we start getting on this slant, and my, things might get a little interesting. Yeah, see, I, I did not do that. It's pulling... <laughs> It's pulling me downhill. <laughs> oh, no, man. So that's what happens, I guess, when you use a header that's kind of too big for the combine, eh? Wow. Okay. I don't know if there's what I can do about that. Um, you, you can't really put a weight on this. Okay. Well, here. Let's... um. I wonder if it would be better for me to go, maybe, go crossways on this field instead of sideways along that slant. Maybe that's the answer. Oh, oh, I'm not paying attention. Crap. Ugh. All right. My fault. Totally my fault. Son of a gun. Well, at least I noticed it before we ruined any more crop. Oh, crap. All right. Well, whatever. Can't do anything about it now, except for trying not to do it again. Uh, but what I was saying is maybe if we go this direction, it'll work better for us. Okay, so I'm going to swing around this way. And we might as well try and grab some of this. I guess maybe, you know, when we first started, I hadn't gone far enough. Yeah, see, it's pulling me now into the field for us to damage those crops. It does pretty good once we get on the flat. So it's just the, the hill. It's pretty cool how this game takes you know, those kind of physics into account, though. Pretty impressed. Okay, let's swing back around here and get this little part. All right, so now what we're going to do is let's finish out this little corner first. And we're probably going to be further ahead just to do it like this. I know hitting those bushes in real life would be really bad for the header. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to dip down the hill to get this last little piece here. At least we're square with the hill now. Ish. It's still it's still pulling me. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Uh, there's just a little bit more right there. Okay. I have a feeling like if we had the right header on here, we wouldn't have this problem, or at least not as much. But this is the second to the smallest combine in the game too so there it's pretty light as combines go uh, combines rather go uh 
Houston? <laughs> Let's just pretend that never happened. <laughs> It's, it's still kind of pulling me. Yeah, isn't that interesting? This is pretty level ground here. Okay, well, you know, now that we know that, we might want to reconsider this header. I think, I think what I'll do, though, is I'm going to keep it for now. And if the Dutes Far header does come on sale... We'll probably end up buying it because we could probably get it for I'm guessing around ten grand. And then this header will either at that point sell or maybe we'll just hang on to it until we get a larger combine too. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. I mean it's not terrible, but it's still it's still kind of pulling me left and right a little bit. See like that right there? I didn't do that. So it's very interesting. Okay, we're at 62% full and 5,340 liters. We were unfortunately never able to get these stones up because I planted first, which I didn't realize at the time that I had to get the stones off first, but. We know better for next time. The game does suggest that if the stones are on the field, they can damage your equipment. So I don't know if that translates to our durability just going down more quickly or, or what the deal is with that. Okay, let's flip around this way. We're gonna go back up to that side of the field and then we're gonna make a headland up there. look at something. I think this header lifts up automatically when you're full, but let's just see. 9,900. Yeah, it does. Nice. Very nice. Except for we just ran over some more crops. <laughs> Dang it. Um, I wonder why the beet harvester didn't do that. The beet harvester just we kept on going. Uh, but it's good to know that this, this does that for sure. Okay, so that is our first load, 100%. So what we're going to do is pull the combine this way. And actually, no, you know what? I think just so I don't risk running over the crops, let's back it up over to here. Okay, let's run over and, and get our trailer and see... Uh, what happens here? Where am I going? I'm going over this way. There we go. Look at those oats. You know, I love oats in real life too, oatmeal. Really good for you too. Let it fill up the front and then we'll move to the middle. Okay, we're 25% full in the trailer. All right, so a full combine load is 8,500 liters, and that fills the trailer up about a third. So you know what that means? That means we should be able to get this entire field inside of our trailer and we don't have to lease anything. All right, that's good news. Um, I wish this trailer had a cover though, but it doesn't. Unless, is there a, a cover configuration for it? 
I think I looked at this before. So it's this trailer here. Configuration. Now, all it does is have an extension. Okay. Well, I think what we'll end up doing then is we're just going to pull this into to the barn and store it there. Because obviously we don't want to leave it open outside. Um, actually, no, we don't need to disconnect. Let's just keep this connected. Turn the tractor off. And jump on back into here. Okay, let's get the rest of these oats harvested. is finished that didn't go so bad uh, we got 71 percent in the uh, the combine another 6,000 liters which will easily be able to fit in this trailer so yeah all, <laughs> all of that concern I had all along about where we were gonna store this not a concern not a concern at all we got it covered man So you probably need to be, I'm guessing, right about here. Okay. Oh. Uh, glad that thing's made out of rubber. Well, at least I'm assuming it is. <laughs> it's a little flexible. A little too close. That should be good. There we go. Oh, 
even when you get this close and look at the oats, it's like, yep, yeah, that looks like oats. That is really neat. Before they've been rolled, of course, which was something that I'm sure happens at the cereal plant. All right, cool, man. So, um, where does that, where does that give us in total? Let's hop in here. Okay, so we basically have 14,543 liters. And we only filled our trailer at 59%. Very cool. Okay, so yeah, we were, what we're going to do is uh, store these in the barn. We'll come back in a, in a few moments here. Now, if this was real life, of course, I would also put a tarp over them or, you know, whatever the appropriate way to store oats inside of a trailer for three more months would be. Because you don't want uh, vermin and stuff getting into it, even, even though it's out of the weather, you know, being in the barn and all. So we'll just pretend that I have a tarp in the barn that I'm using to cover this. I'm really surprised this trailer doesn't have a cover. Some, the other Rudolphs do, but I think I got this one because it had like a side dump and I don't know if the other ones do. Maybe they do, I'm not sure. But at least we don't have to worry about the weather. For those of you who are experienced with this game, just out of curiosity, what would happen if I had left that out uh, in the trailer uncovered and it rained? Would it actually do something in the game or, or not? Just curious about that. I would, I mean, it certainly wouldn't real life, obviously, right? So I would think that it probably would, but I don't know. Let's just leave you here and we'll run back and get the combine and bring it home. We have to figure out where we're going to put the header too. Uh, I might I might store that just right in front of here. Hey, does this thing actually have water? Oh, I was going to tell you guys too. Um, when I was filling up the water in the greenhouses, I did run over to one of the two water towers and that you can get water out of them, but it takes longer actually to fill from the water tower than it does just going over to that pond that I was using. It doesn't cost me anything. Um, there is a, a line item in your ledger for water costs, so I'm not sure, you know, what, what that would apply to. Maybe if you have, like, plumbed in water, you know, and you're getting it from, like, the city or something, then you get you charge for it. That could be. So, yeah, the header worked out pretty good overall. I mean, it was... <laughs> It was a little bit weird on the slope there for sure. But, I mean, if we end up using this header again on this combine on this field, I, I'll probably just going to have to fight fight it on the slope because I don't want to have to, you know, go the other direction and have to back up and go forward and back up and go forward. Uh, so, you know, we got, we got it done. So, very cool. All right, let's go put this thing away. Let's clean her up. It's not super dirty, but a little bit. All right. Also, let's grab our toolbox here and turn the the rotation on this is just bizarre. Put it down there and then uh, take a look and see. 
So this is about half down. It's going to cost us about 1900 bucks to repair. Let's just do it. So that way it's all in good repair for the next time we use it. And this is going to cost $389 to repair. Let's do that too. Beautiful. Okay. Stick our handy dandy little toolbox over there. Let's go park the header. Um, I mean, I could back the combine in there and have the header stick out, but I don't think we want to do that because that's going to be weird. And I don't have any indoor place to store this, so it's just going to have to sit out side because that's all we can do. Eventually, I want to get some sheds for stuff like this, but can't afford that right now. It'll all come in time. Just a reminder, too, for those of you who either don't know or have forgotten, I am playing this game on hard mode, so everything's just a little costs a little more, takes a little longer and whatnot. But for, for me, it makes the game more enjoyable, too. I wonder how much hard mode, at least in terms of pricing, it, uh, mimics real life. I'd be curious to know that. Oh. I didn't know we could extend that. Oh, interesting. What does that do? Maybe if you have taller plants? Huh. Okay. Let's get a little closer. Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, what, what that extension actually does. My guess would be if you have taller taller plants, then you would extend it out a little more, maybe. Anyways, guys, that is it for this episode. This was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. You know, um, selling our own stuff. I mean, we've sold hay and silage, uh, you know, before, but we got got to sell produce. We got to, well, we haven't sold our oats yet, I guess, but we did get to harvest them. We got that killer deal on that header, even though it's not technically the right header, but we got it worked. Um, and just really thoroughly enjoyed uh, this episode and I hope that you guys did as well. Uh, what's coming up now? Um, we're gonna be in September. On the next day, uh, I have set the greenhouses to auto sell, so we're just going to let them do their thing for now. Uh, we're waiting on the hay to grow. We're waiting on the cotton. In fact, I think we have to wait till October to do the cotton. Is that what the deal is? Cotton, cotton, cotton. Yeah, we have to wait till at least October. We'll have October through November to harvest the cotton, and we we'll have to figure out what all of that involves. Cotton, of course, has grown primarily in this in the south uh and southeast of the u.s and i'm not from there so i've had no really experience with cotton before uh, but we'll figure it out and have fun in the process and let's see we have all that straw to bale too so that'll probably be the very first thing we'll do in the next episode is bale up our straw and then we'll have another round of contracts because it will be september so that's where we are guys i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment and share out the video and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.